Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in as we introduce Microsoft Teams. It's a new collaboration tool that is part of our Microsoft Office 365 suite. I think you'll find it's quite a powerful and enjoyable tool. Dr. Belcher asked me to create a team for each chief and his or her direct reports. You may get an email like this. If you do, click the link or you can open your web browser and go to teams.microsoft.com. Here you'll enter your email address. And your password. As well as use multi-factor authentication. Microsoft Teams has clients for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, or you can just use the website. The desktop app runs exactly the same as the website, and the mobile app is very similar. If you stick to the website, you can activate desktop notifications down here, but I'm going to dismiss it. So once you get into Teams, then you will see your Teams here. If the team name is bold, that means that you have something unread in that team. Once you click the team, you will see the general channel, which is a feed where you can post things and reply, like Facebook or Twitter. Try typing a message to say hi to show that you got in successfully. If you want to use formatting and more features like you would an email, you can click this button to unlock subject line, formatting, indenting, bullet points, and more. Click here to close your draft. You can edit or delete your own post even days later by clicking here and going to edit or delete. If you're an owner, you can delete other posts and replies. Like it says here, you can at mention someone like this to get their attention. Press the at sign on your keyboard and start typing someone's name and then choose from the list. It will send a notification on their team's client up here in activity. There are many ways to communicate besides words. You can react to a post by putting your mouse on the top right corner of the post and clicking the item you want. We use thumbs up most often to show agreement or praise. One of our favorite actions in a channel is to use a post like an emoji or a GIF. There are a lot of social media-esque tools in Teams, I guess as people enter the workforce who grew up on social media. Your team may be very empty at this point, so let's hit the three dots by the team name and choose Manage Team. From here you can see the owners and the members, and you can add members like so. If you're a member and not an owner, then on this screen you merely invite people to join. If you're an owner, you can promote someone else to become an owner. A team owner can also remove members by clicking the X next to their name. If you'd like to remove an owner, first demote them to a member and then you will have the X button to remove them from the team. Owners can add people instead of simply inviting them, and owners can change team settings, which I'll save for another video. Another thing owners can do is to rename the team or change the description. Click the dots next to the team name and then click Edit Team. Here's your name, your description, and your picture or avatar. I recommend you keep the privacy at private. Remember, staff and students all across JCPS 
have access to Microsoft Teams, and if it's public, they would have the opportunity to join your team. You probably don't want students or other staff to invite themselves in on your discussions. So now we've renamed the team. You can organize your conversation by using channels. See here we have a general channel and an infrastructure channel. You can make channels for a team of coworkers, a project, or just for fun. For now, every channel is open to the whole team, but Microsoft says that private channels are coming soon. Click next to the team name to add a channel. You can add a description as well. And we'll come back in a minute to how to subscribe to one channel or another. Teams is the next evolution of Skype, so if you're familiar with Skype, then know that you can do all the same things that you could do in Skype. Here in chat, you can start an instant message with one person or many people. This way you can create ad hoc groups if you want to communicate with them instead of the whole team. Also you can make a call or video call as it shows up here. And you can add people to an existing conversation. And also like Skype you can go up here and change your availability and your profile picture. I recommend you change your profile picture so that you can put a face to a name. Your picture and your availability will show up every time you post, so choose a good picture. Your availability is there to suggest whether you're answered right away or if you're away from your desk. Another way that Teams is like Skype is that you can set up meetings and calls. If you go over here to Calendar, you'll see that your calendar syncs with Outlook. If you have an upcoming Teams meeting, then you can join it from here. You can create a meeting in the future and put it on your calendar here and on Outlook. Or you can click Meet Now to start a meeting and call people manually. I believe that's only available in the full client. Going back to Teams. Let's say there are multiple channels in your team, but you only care about one or two. Well, you can enable notifications for some and disable notifications on the other. So click on the channel and click on the three dots to go to channel notifications. You can also hide a channel if you don't want to see it in the list of all the channels. It will move into the hidden category. So when you go into channel notifications, the default is that if anyone posts, you will not receive a notification. But you could change that to where you will see a post anytime anyone does anything in the team. That may be too much, so I like to switch it to off. There's also such a thing as channel mentions. Remember we mentioned that you can at mention a person. Well, you can also at mention a channel or an entire team. And you can decide whether you want to have a notification pop up as well as in your activity feed or only show it in the feed or don't bother me at all. Here are the default settings which I would recommend. So if you turn it off, it effectively mutes that channel, but you can still see if there's something unread in that channel if it's bold. So if you do have a lot of teams and channels, how do you know if someone has posted or replied to a post or mentioned you? It will show up here in the activity pane. You can filter 
by mentions, replies, and reactions to your post. Click the filter and the three dots to show the different categories. Did you know you could share files in Teams as well? Attach a file to a post and everyone can view and edit that copy of the file. If you haven't used files yet on your team, it's going to take a few minutes to set it up. Then you can come back a few minutes later and add something from your computer or from your OneDrive or from other teams. The concept is that behind every team is a SharePoint site and that's how the magic happens. Whenever you add a file to your team, it, it saves it to that SharePoint site. Then you can go to the Files tab and see all the files that have been shared in this team. And you can also open it in SharePoint to view it that way. You can even edit files together. If you open them in Teams, you can have multiple people editing the file at the same time. As you can see, there are many fun things to do in Teams, and I've not even covered all of them. I've been using Teams for probably two years, and I know the Service Desk uses Teams daily as a part of their work. They'll, they would be a great resource if you're wondering how to do something. I would encourage you to visit the Microsoft Teams channel on YouTube for many short two-minute videos on how to do things. I've posted them on a welcome message in the general channel. Here are a couple links to get you started. Or you can always at mention me or communicate with me through the chat. You'll learn a lot if you just jump in and start using it for yourself. If you have any questions, I'm always a chat away on Teams. Thanks and have a great day.